Hey everybody, Dr. O here. We're going to talk about the pancreas, but we're primarily going to talk about the exocrine pancreas. So we already would have talked about the endocrine pancreas a few chapters ago, and that's going to be that 1% of the pancreas, the pancreatic islets or islets of Langerhans that produce insulin and glucagon. So let's forget about those for now, and we're going to focus on the other 99% of the pancreas, which is, which is the exocrine pancreas. And remember, exocrine glands, they're going to dump their secretions on two surfaces. In this case, it's going to be the lining of the small intestine, and um, exocrine glands also have ducts. So you're going to see the word ducts thrown around here quite a bit. All right, uh, so the, the, cell, the cells, the clusters of cells that make up the exocrine portion of the pancreas are called uh, the pancreatic acini. You see these acinar cells here. Uh, only a couple of them are there, or else they take up too much space on the picture, but you can see those. Um, these are going to be the, the cells that make, which the pancreas's primary job is to, is to make and secrete digestive enzymes and sodium bicarbonate. The bi bicarbonate's job is to neutralize the acid. So once it's squirted into your small intestine, the bicarbonate's job is to neutralize the acid acids coming from that chyme that's in your that's coming from your stomach and the digestive enzymes are going to be the key enzymes that do most digestion of the foods that you eat so, uh, all right, so you see here this, uh, the pancreatic duct is going to be capturing all these enzymes and bicarbonate that are being produced by these acinar cells, and it's going to travel down the pancreas where it fuses with the bile duct. So the, so the, the bile duct is going to be where the bile from the liver and gallbladder come from, going to fuse with your major or main pancreatic duct, and they're going to enter the small intestine when, when they're asked to uh, be secreted uh, at what's called the hepatopancreatic ampulla. There's a sphincter there that would keep this tube closed, this duct closed, unless, unless it needs to pop open. Uh, that's going to be hormones are going are to control that. We can talk about that a bit in a moment. Uh, your, so your pancreas makes about a liter of this pancreatic juice every day, which has the digestive enzymes that I'll go over right now, but then also bicarbonate, which I already covered. So the... Um, your pancreas makes pancreatic amylase to break down carbohydrates, pancreatic lipase to break down lipids. Those are going to be produced in their active form because they're not, they wouldn't eat the pancreas. But your pancreas also makes protein digesting enzymes called uh, trypsin and chymotrypsin. These have to be produced in an inactive form and they're activated when they get to the destination or else they would chew up the pancreas. This seems to be a part of the mechanism of pancreatitis. The pancreas is being inflamed and, and digested by these digestive enzymes. Enzymes. All right. Um, what else about that? So as far as the control of it, remember the pancreas is always going to be making these things. The presence of food um, entering the small intestine from the stomach is going to be primarily what causes these things to be released. Uh, the type of food will have an impact. Um, food that has more lipids and more proteins in it is going to lead to even more um, a pancreatic juice being secreted. So really the type, the type and amount of food will have an impact, but primarily big picture, the presence of food showing up in the small intestines or at, on, as it's on its way there is going to lead to this the pancreatic juice being secreted. Your um, parasympathetic nervous system would play a role, but uh, but that's not a huge deal. Okay, so that is the exocrine pan pancreas and its function, making digestive enzymes and making this buffer sodium bicarbonate. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.